But he had asked me, uh, he said, do I feel if I am not to abide by the laws of the, of the country and only to abide by the laws of God? That was one of his questions. Then he also asked me um, if I had felt that, uh, that I, you know, I, I don't, I, for, for some reason, the, the second question escapes me now. But uh, my question to you is, um, is I, I, I caught the call a little bit late, so I'm, I'm hearing a whole lot of things that I haven't heard before, a um, uh, deed of sal- or was it salvage or something of that nature. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it was, what it was called. But um, with this whole EDB, EDP for the court process, I was on the site tonight, and I saw that you are now using step three, um, of the EDP process to the registrar now in the courts. Is that correct? There's two processes that have been stepped up. In the in the court process, I want to continue the process there. So if you've started with a filing to the court and they don't recognize it, they don't act on it, I want you to be able to have the ability to step up to the next level. And secondly, there was no witnesses involved in the process so you're very much on your own and I wanted to introduce the concept of the witnesses as a a stronger means of notorial procedure so that when they dishonoured you you had a way of of responding but also those witnesses then become your agent um, to to effectively get them to the point of perfecting their dishonour so there's a lot of changes there that I think would be worth you reading first um, because if you haven't heard all those things, it's worthwhile reading them first. As to your case, what I would suggest to you um, that is, is not only is it crucial because your family, as you say, is in prison, right. is to take great care to read the changes that have been done now in these documents because this, there is an addressing of that in these documents. I promised that I would address the issue of family in, um, as well as yourself. When you redeem yourself, you redeem your family. That's an important change. But I'd also suggest that you read How to Succeed in Court, just really focusing on these areas of, of, of how to conduct yourself because <clears throat> this has happened now too often. We think we're okay, we think we're okay, we get to court, we're not. Or we think we're okay, we think we're okay, we get a phone call, we fall apart. Right? We're just not ready. We just haven't taken enough time. We, we, we know it's important, but we haven't made it an utter imperative to be competent. And, and, you know, I hate the fact that you've got professional people who have spent, in many cases, their whole life, and, and, and they expect us to stand up against, you know, a lifetime of, of training. But you know what, if you, if you stand true and you take the time, you can. You, you, you have reason more than most to spend more time absolutely becoming competent with this. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. But if you don't go through this and, and have someone there that's going to play the opposite and going to push you and test you and, and highlight the fact that you're far from ready then then really there is always a risk that uh, you get stuck on a monologue or that you fill your head full of confusion and that when the time comes, because they do it all in a great rush, the system's not designed to make it easy for you, the system's designed to trick you and trap you, right. when that time comes, you won't be ready. Well, so, I, I, I took the whole phone call actually as a as a wake up because I realized that there were certain things that he had asked me that I, I kind of were hesitant to answer because I didn't want to back myself into a corner of sorts. So, um, you know, I had to do a double take. So I did take that as a, as a warning because I realized that, you know, um, sure. All of this research is, it's awesome. in and of itself, just, you know, um, of what you guys have done, but at the same time, you know, there must be a, 
you know, a respect to what it is you're you're dealing with because, you know, I, I think I spoke to Yoda on, on Ukeda and he said to me, you know, there is no magic magic bullet. There's no magic form that you can that you can file and it'll all just go away. Well, you know, actually, oh, um, I, dis- I, I disagree, <clears throat> and I'm going to change it now because I think this is important. There is okay. a magic bullet. You're the magic bullet. Okay. You. Well, the knowledge. Yours. I see it as no, no, no. You, yeah, yeah. No, but knowledge is one part of it. Your spirit your respect and honor in the face of dishonor, your willingness to, to be the, the righteous good man before such insanity and cruelty and to know the importance of your word is the magic bullet. Your knowledge of non-consent, your ability to stand there confident that you do not say what you don't believe and you do not promise what you don't and can't keep and that you will not be forced to tell a lie. That is the magic bullet. Uh, you I, are the magic bullet. I, I definitely, um, when you put it in that, in that way, I, I definitely agree with you 100%. You know, right, but um, you... And now, I, I know that I'm taking time on this conversation with you because the fact that your family is in prison. But I just leave one thing, and we'll kind of leave it for today, if that's all right. You, you, if, if you are far from ready, you know, a, 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 a great sword created by a master Japanese swordsmith may go through three, four, five hundred folds. Yes? Right. You're only up to five, ten folds. Yeah? Yeah. You go out and you practice with that sword, you know, a, a swift a swift strike and that sword will shatter. You've got a long way to go. But don't think that paper will save you. You, only you can save yourself. Right. But you have now the tools to consider that. That's the key. You're not alone anymore. So well, good luck. Um, well, would yeah? you... Uh... I know um, you said you wanted. I'll, I'll just say this really quick. Um, anyone else in, in this situation? Because I know there are people on the call. Because I was on the call and I was listening to other people who are in similar situations, and you know, waiting for them to call so that I can see how their situation was going. I have to go to court on the 28th uh, next Monday, which is only a status conference. It's not you know trial or anything. Sure. But uh, you know. Um, so you would recommend that I, I, I study the material that is on the how to succeed in court um, section. Is that what you're saying? Yes, because you see where you where I feel you're deficient is that is that you you're still getting a handle on on exactly what you're dealing with. Who is the right. court? What is the court? Um, what is your word? You, you still don't even know what your word represents in history, do you? No, I don't. No, you don't even know what via caractus is, the right of of of, uh, of signing under duress. You don't know yet fully because you haven't tried this. You haven't been tested. Your friends haven't stood there as a tribunal and done a star chamber on you and see if you can stand up as, a, as an honourable man and defend yourself by your soul, your spirit. You're not, you're not, this is what you need to do. You need to immerse yourself. It's up to you. Immerse yourself in the situation that they are challenging you. And the success of this is in your hands. And no paperwork can save you. You are the magic bullet. Okay. All right? All right. Sounds good. I, uh, I want to thank you, you know, for all your help and everything you're doing. Awesome work. All right. All right. Well, good luck. All right. Okay. Have a good night. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, uh, we have uh, Truth Matters. Um, you're on the air. Hi, Brian. Frank, this is Greg up in Idaho. Hi, Greg. Hey. Hi, Greg. Hi, Brian. Frank, I got a question for a friend of mine who's part of the study group that we have. Um, 
she has a 15-year-old daughter who never received a, a birth certificate or a social security number. And um, the daughter's been pressing her mom, as most uh, children do at that age, to uh, get a driver's license. And um, when she doesn't have a birth certificate or social security number, she was asking me how should her daughter start her life off in this crazy world right now. So I didn't know what to tell her. Well, she should get a trust number. Then go up to um, each of the uh, each of the um, departments and say, "I'd like a um, I'd like a driver's license, please. Here's my trust." Okay. Um, I'd like then I'd go to the IRS and say, "I'd like um, my EIN number, please." Now EINs, we took EINs off, and I'm going to. <clears throat> I am going to modify it slightly so that when people do, in fact, need to get an EIN, that it's continued because there's been a change in the last couple of days, which I wasn't aware of. The IRS has started to actually honour people's EIN. We haven't changed the forms, but the IRS has started to change its tune and, and, and start honouring the uh, applications for EINs. So something's happened in the IRS, um, but the reason I just took it off um, and said we'd be working on community is that communities, ultimately the answer to this is, is having a community. I mean, if you talk about everything we're dealing with, we're all islands at the moment. We're getting people around us, we've got study groups around us, but, but we're still very much ones and twos, threes and fours, you know, amongst thousands. And, uh, it, it, you know, without having a community around you, they, you know, they, the system feels that it can quite happily pick you off one by one. So with that in mind, I'd go and get the EIN uh, and I would just use my trust number as if you already had a, a social security number and a birth certificate. I mean, what is your live born record? What is your live born record? Isn't it not a, an equivalent? Yeah. Yeah. It's greater. Right. It's a higher, a higher position. So yes. Yeah, so well, there you go. Make beautiful. sure she's got one and, and off she goes. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. That's a great, no, that's a great response and I'll pass it on. I also wanted to make a comment about something just to endorse research that's been coming in and just I'll say this quickly now, years and years ago I had an opportunity to meet with a Greek Orthodox priests and bishops and uh, some high Catholic bishops and um, a priest I should say and the information that was given to me um, cryptically by these men years ago um, you're confirming in just incredible ways that the uh, um, that everything that I as a switched over from Greek Orthodox to Protestant had become um, was still under the control of the quote unquote main church. Um, and so what you're bringing out is just confirmed by the cryptic messages by the fact that we were worshiping on Sunday and the fact that we were using their calendar and all the other issues related to uh, both churches, which both disputed who was primary, whether it was the Eastern Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, or the Roman Catholics, both claimed superior position. But nonetheless, it was still found it ironic that both of them claimed that all of us, all, all Protestants and all other uh, purported Christians were under their authority. So um, yep. you're just confirming it in great ways. Thank you. No, thank you. And uh, good luck with what you're doing and all the best to the, to the study group as well. Thank you very much, Frank and Brian. Thank you. Okay. Thanks so much. Uh, next up we have Lynn. Lynn, you're on the air with Frank. Hi, thank you. Um, I In my notes that I'm taking... I wanted to put in the first deed poll that you gave an example of. And when I went into the site, what I'm finding is the old one. Now, I found the, the pronuncio restitutum, and I found the, um, the, second, the second one. But I, when you were reading the very first one, I didn't find it on the site. So just let me know because I like to insert these in the notes in case people are reading them and they don't have uh, Internet access when they're reading them. Yeah, thanks, Lynn. What I'd suggest is, and I'm sorry I've noticed that some of the navigation needs to be fixed. If you go to Ecclesiastical Deep Poll and you click on Contents, go right down to the bottom, it'll say... Um, Steps in sending an ecclesiastical deed poll to registrar. Click on step two, ecclesiastical deed poll. Then go down 
to 